So today we're talking EDC. I would like to extend to you an invitation to the pants party. Excuse me? The party, the pants with the pants. Party with pants. Brick, are you saying that there's a party in your pants and that I'm invited? That's it. With everything going on in the world, what we carry as a part of our EDC is more important than ever. So I thought I'd give a quick breakdown of what's in my pockets, what's my EDC, and then kind of the methodology behind the madness. I think one of the most overlooked parts of EDC is the belt that we choose to wear. Uh, and my belt of choice as of late has been this Core Garrison 1.75 reinforced belt. Now, a quick disclaimer, this was sent to me by them to review, but I will tell you that immediately upon opening it, I knew that I was gonna like it, but then wearing it for the past few weeks, I've fallen in love with it. This is my favorite EDC belt, and I think probably one of the best, if not the best, EDC belts on the market. So before I had this Blue Alpha gear, uh, with the Cordura buckle. It worked, but it wasn't ideal. And the reason being is that while it was stiff and it is nylon, it, it is very malleable and bendable. Um, so when it would carry under weight, it would tip, typically like fold over and the weight of the gun would, would go like that when I would undo the belt. Also, I move my gun from time to time depending on context and where I'm at. So I may carry it at, you know, 12, one o'clock appendix carrying. I may carry it at three or four o'clock if I'm running around with my son. Having to adjust the length of the belt with this style of belt was kind of a pain. I, it just wasn't ideal, especially trying to do it on the fly. And then the other thing too is even though that this has the smaller buckle so that it'll go through the belt loops easier, it still gets hung up in there and it's still kind of a pain trying to get it off and on. It's just, it's just not as intuitive. And this is kind of bulky, it sticks out. And you guys know, especially if you wear it here, so you kind of got to move it to the side. So it just wasn't ideal. Using this, the belt buckle is more streamlined, it is simpler, it comes as a one size fits most, and then you cut it based on your size so that it fits you. Once you cut it and you've got it sized correctly, the way it fits into the buckle is that you've got these two screws that you tighten in to hold it in place, along with this claw, and you just snap the claw in place, and so you've got two ways of keeping the belt secure so that it doesn't come loose from the buckle. I haven't had any issues with it with everything that I carry on it. So then it goes around and you have this ratchet system with quarter inch adjustments, so that once you go through, you will hear those audible clicks. It doesn't come loose. It stays in there secure, and then you've got a little, uh, little notch on the bottom or a little tab, and you push that, and it will release the belt. So this makes it super nice and super easy to adjust on the fly. So if you've ever been sitting down and had a big meal and wanted to loosen your belt or undoing it to use the restroom or just putting it through your belt loop and or belt loops and pants, super easy, super intuitive, really like how it fits. Love that you can adjust it. It is, they call proprietary reinforced and I, while it is nylon, it does have reinforcement in it. So it's not as malleable or bendable as the Blue Alpha one or some of the other belts I've used. Unlike a leather belt, if over time this one won't wear out. So. So far, it's been great. I love it, super comfortable, holds everything I need it to hold. Uh, they start around $69, I think. So you can check them out there. They have other colors, other styles. They have a leather one as well. Um, I will put a link down below, you can check them out. It'll hold up to 10 pounds, or up to a 10 pound gun is what it says. Now, when I've used it to go to the restroom and I've undone the belt, you know, again, it tends to flop out. This doesn't do that, it holds the weight just fine. Um, it is comfortable, can't recommend it enough, but I think it's super important to, to have a good belt to carry all your EDC stuff on because essentially this is what's holding up all those things, your gun, not just your gun, but your pants carrying everything else that you have on you. Moving on, all right, so the one question I know I get, I get asked all the time is EDC, what's my EDC gun? And it is the Langdon Tactical, the LTT Elite Beretta 92. This is, this is the, uh, has the trigger in a bag job done on it. There's a review coming on this. I do carry a Surefire U300 on it with the Filster paddles. I carry it in a QVO Tactical, more discreet holster. I've removed the claw because like I said, I move the gun around. So I typically, if I'm, depending on where I'm at, context determines how I carry and, and where I carry it. If I'm by myself, I'm out moving around, walking around, I would usually carry it in an appendix style. If I'm with my son and I'm chasing him around a playground or something or whatever, I'll usually move it to three or four o'clock because it makes bending over easier, it's more comfortable chasing them around, because uh, I know I'm gonna be bending a lot, just makes it easier to do it that way. I typically only carry one mag on me on my person, and I, I've got the Metgar 18 round mags with a uh, gold dot. I only carry one mag, just because from what we've seen in statistics and data, stateside engagements, according to Centrifuge, are, the way they say it is, short in duration, close in proximity, and high in intensity. So you're new, usually not going through two or three mags, in any given engagement. Moving on, I have the Benchmade Bugout. 
the OD green, just because I love OD green. Uh, probably needs to be sharpened, but I use this for a lot of different things. Been a great knife, super lightweight, um, super easy to carry, sits in the pocket really nice. Pretty cheap too, so that way if uh, something happens to it, it's easy to replace. Uh, Keychain was actually given to me by Flatline Fiber Co. Shout out to those guys. They sent me a sling too. I'm going to do a review on that, but uh, this has been one of my, like, this has been awesome, this keychain. I've been wanting one of these for a while, and they sent me one, so that's dope. It makes it easy to grab my keys without having to dig through my pocket, especially if I'm holding my son or got other things in my hand. I can grab it, start the truck without having to dig in my pockets to get it. AirPods, so I don't have the AirPods Pro. I'm not, you know, on that level yet, but these are nice because I like to watch YouTube videos or listen to music, or if I'm on a, a phone call hands-free, I like to keep my hands, I don't like to have stuff in my hands when I'm walking around and talking. Wallet, just a plain leather, Leather wallet, keep some cash on you, keep an ID with you. Cash will get you out of a lot of situations. That's one of the things I learned from traveling around the world. If you've got cash on you and you get in a sticky situation, you can usually get out of it pretty quick. iPhone, I don't know what generation iPhone it is. I don't really care about phone technology that much. I use it just for calls and listening to podcasts, music, YouTube, those types of things. Over here, I've got Jack Mason watch. I usually carry an analog watch on me simply because uh, they're less appealing to people wanting to steal from you. Digital watches usually go for more money. You know, not a lot of people are into analog watches. Uh, it's Jack Mason. They are a local watchmaker. They make beautiful watches at an affordable price. I'm not bougie like Will and Chad. I can't afford the Omegas and the Rolexes and all that. Maybe one day, but not right now. Light EDC Light did a review on this Mod Light OKW with the Theorem uh, switchback on it. You can check that out. I'll link that above. Uh, lens wipes because glasses got to see. I hate dirty glasses. I hate having stuff on my glasses. It bugs me. Burt's Beeswax, because hot days, windy days, and women don't like crusty lips. A little pro tip there for you fellas. And then tourniquet. I always have a tourniquet on me, stored away somewhere. Um, I know some of you are gonna ask, well, how come you don't have an extra mag, or how come you don't have a full med kit and all this and that? Look, you, there's only so much space in your pockets, right? So you kind of got to prioritize what you're gonna use. And these are the things that I have found that I will use probably 90% of the time, or most likely to use. Anything outside of this, I'm probably in a really bad situation. Um, I do have a med kit in my truck that I can easily grab in my visor, the field craft, but I'm gonna do a whole second part to this and we'll talk more about stuff that I carry off the body for those crazy situations. Yeah, this is my EDC. This is what I carry on in any given day. So it's in my pockets, um, on my belt. One thing I will say about EDC, something I don't think we talk enough about, but dressing for the context you're gonna be in, context ultimately determines what you carry, but it should also determine how you dress. In the same way that we look at the military or special operations units and how they use certain camouflage or colors or patterns, whatever, to blend in with their surroundings. The same way, especially with everything that's going on right now, you should dress to blend in with your surroundings. You don't wanna give anybody any reason to isolate you or to key in on you to, to make yourself a target. So it's really important that if you're going somewhere like an entertainment district or you're going out to eat, maybe don't wear your tack pants. Don't wear your 5'11 pants with your 5'11 polo and hat Cody with your 5'11 boots. Dress accordingly for the context you're in. If you're going to a place where there's a bunch of hipsters, you don't have to be a full-on hipster, but it helps to blend in a little bit. You know, if you're going somewhere where it's nice and people are dressing up, dress nice, fit in, blend in. Um, if you're going to the hood, Good luck. Speaking of EDC, I was actually out with some of the average Joes. We went out for food and cigars, and uh, while we were out, I decided to ask them about their EDC and things they carry and what they thought was important, and here's that. So we just got through eating, and then uh, the guys had some cigars and drinks, but I figured this would be a great time to talk about uh, EDC and most important part of your EDC outside of your gun, obviously. So I got the one and only Fred Hawkins. What's up with it? So Fred. Sir. What is the most important part of your EDC outside of your gun? I say, I, I don't know, in, important maybe, but I, I say as much, the thing that I use the most is probably is, uh, is EDC2, Emerson, Multitasker Tools Collab. Um, I've used this thing so much, like admin stuff, and honestly, I use the screwdriver probably more than the knife. Um, and even for things that I probably shouldn't have used it, because I, I chipped this one on accident. And that's my fault, not their fault. I shouldn't have been prying what I was trying to pry open. But I, I mean, I don't even carry like a regular knife anymore, because the blade on it was like so good. That I, I mean, I carry a fixed blade sometimes, but probably this. Um, I mean, I carry med stuff, but as far as what I actually use the most, it's gonna be this right here. So, yeah, yeah. All right, JT. What's up? Most important part of EDC outside of your gun? Mm, I would say all things equal. I know Fred says he uses multi tool a lot. I would probably have to go do it with the cop out answer and just say my cell phone because comms are important. Being able to let people know where you're at, being able to let them know that you're good to go. 
uh, being able to use your GPS and stuff like that. Now, obviously, if the cell towers are down or something like that, that's a whole different story. But on a day-to-day -day basis, aside from my pistol, I use my cell phone all the freaking time. Fred, you said you want to redo? No, I'm kidding. No, that's actually, <laughs> good, to that's actually a good answer, though, for comms. Like, because you're right, you got to be able to contact people. So I'm with JC on that. But I still, I'm saying, what I use the most that I carry that, I mean, everyone carries a phone, but I, I, communication is key. So I'm with you on that. <laughs> Frank. Well, cell phone. I'm going to go with the answer. Cell phone, <laughs> communication, you got to call, get on the phone. Because he lacking. <laughs> he lacking. <laughs> he lacking in these streets, bro. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, hold, on, hold on. Since I got you here. One phone or two phones or three? I have. I, one. I carry two, but gotta have the burner. One is out of necessity. You gotta, you gotta have the burner. I have one, but one day, you know, who knows? Maybe it's I'll not do a burner. Some, it's a work phone. Maybe I'll do some work squirrely phone. boy stuff. It's, one it's day a burner. Need to have it's two. a burner. <laughs> Just one right now. All, all the squirrely boy stuff. All right, let's go. Let's go ask uh, Brandon and Connell. All right, real quick, real quick. Mo doing? Most okay. important part of your EDC, outside of your gun. Outside of my gun? Yeah, cell phone. Uh, for major sure. plug for compliance edge blades. Yeah. Yeah. When you don't want to carry a gun into a bar. That's a good point. I don't have a major plug, so cell phone. Cell phone. Cell, cell phone. phone. Gotta call. Cell phone. That build. That build that he's paying. <laughs> everyone, everyone thinks EDC has to be a weapon. I'm like, oh, what do I? Ever, oh yeah, my phone and my wallet. Oh, a wallet is a great thing to have. Ooh, yeah. I don't, I don't need to have anything. I just call the homies. You know. Yeah, just call the homies. There you go. I'll buy all your drinks. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Buy, buy you back from the gulag. What was the answer? Huh? What was his answer? Uh, oh, uh, his knife. knife. Yeah. Or, or always, always have your wallet on you. Yeah, well, it's Oh, your driver's too. license. That's a great thing to have. I your do. driver's license, yeah. You don't, so, need, you don't need a knife if you are you always prepared for? What do you need my name for? With your knife Okay, hands. so, hey, okay, so that reminds me, okay, that leads know, me, that leads me to uh, another question. Uh, that's my EDC over there. Yeah. <laughs> on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so given the current situation and co current cultural climate, what should people's mindset be as they step out to do everyday things? Not talking about going out and like protecting location or anything like that, but just normal EDC and like wanting to so, take care of themselves and their, and their families. Man, Situa yeah. Situa what, what was that? Gray man and disengage. Yeah, 100%. Be prepared for whatever you might think, obviously to a certain extent. Don't go overboard carrying around a man purse with everything that you might need, but uh, you know, on me, every day I carry a pistol with a full mag, a secondary mag, a knife, wallet, ID. Um, so having the stuff that you might need, worst case scenario, but best case scenario is always disengage as best as you can. Take consideration who you have with you. Do you want to like get into a, an, like an altercation with your family? Probably best to get them out of. That's what I think of. I'm, I don't have a family. I have a wife, so I try to get out of there. But I would say, kind of what he's saying, like if if, if you are in a situation situation where it's going to dictate I, I i always say this i heard i think i won't drop his name but i heard someone say this like there's a lot of gun fights we've been in that we shouldn't have been in in the first place and so like can you get out of a situation get out of the situation and if you have to go to work be prepared to go to work so yeah what what they said uh for for me i would say the main thing for my edc is uh shoes i say shoes because i used to have to walk home a lot and uh being able to run and get out of places is uh very important and flip-flops are not conducive to that so so the whole reason the whole reason that i am a proponent of disengaging as much as you can is obviously because you want to be legally protected but ultimately just because you have a gun doesn't mean that you're going to be the person that stays in possession of that gun you get into a fight you don't know the other person's skill set they could have been a trained mma fighter or somebody who's trained in how to take weapons from somebody else and so you don't know if in that fight they're going to gain possession of the gun and the last thing i want is to be killed with my own weapon so disengage as much as you can, avoid, 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 only res resort to your firearm if you absolutely have to and have no other decisions that you can make. I think a lot of people get a handgun, whether it be, you know, in training in general, whether it be like a civilian when I first started carrying or as a police officer, a lot of people will, like the gun is the end all be all thing, when that's like normally the thing you're not gonna use, like, you know, there's so many other aspects that you may be from me to you, Jamie, and it's like, do I go for a gun if one's on me? Am I going to try to close distance? Am I going to do I need to get away? Do I just need to give up what I get? You know, there's a lot of different variables there. Um, but understanding, like JT said, you got to re remain retention of that. So should you have some other skills um, to prevent, you know, losing a gun? Or like I said in the first place, like knowing that the gun isn't the end all be all situation. That's just my opinion on that. It was just why I started grappling um, and training because I didn't want to be so dependent on like 
this is always a gun situation. So, gotcha. Brandon, what was your uh, what was your piece of advice? What was that? What was up? What was your piece of advice? Uh, yeah, just stay home, wear a mask in 15 days to uh, flatten the curve. <laughs> <laughs> The responsibility we carry as gun owners who carry guns is a part of our EDC. We carry guns to preserve life, not to take life, right? This is a specific tool for a specific problem. Every one of these items here is a tool for a problem. And the gun is not a be all end all tool. It doesn't solve every problem. And unfortunately with the way things are going, I think people feel that it is becoming more and more of that. And that is not the case. I think if we use the tool between our ears, we will find ourselves not needing to reach for this as often. There are situations that do dictate that, but again, we're doing that to preserve life, not to take life. This is a tool to stop a threat. Now, context will determine what that looks like, and you will have to decide in that moment what that looks like, and be prepared to deal with the consequences of that, whatever it may be. But I just want us to be wise and tactful in the choices we make and the things that we do, and try not to put ourselves in a situation where we need to depend on this. Something I learned a long time ago, going to visit other countries and do work in other countries, um, in some of the worst neighborhoods in America, in some of the worst neighborhoods in the world, in the Middle East and Central America, if you go looking for trouble, you will find it. And that doesn't mean that you're actually going out trying to start a fight, but if you put yourself in a situation where people may antagonize you into a situation you don't wanna be in, then you probably don't need to be there. And if you see that starting to arise, again, be wise, be tactful, be mindful, get out of that situation. There's nothing wrong with moving out of a situation to live to fight another day, right? Especially if we're looking to preserve life and to protect those and the well-being of others around us. So keep that in mind. Be wise in the choices you make. Um, while we do have the rights and the abilities to do a lot of things, it's not always wise to do those things. If you live in a stand your ground state, that's fine. You have the right to stand your ground but it may not always be the wisest decision to do that. And again, doesn't make you any less of a man to de-escalate a situation so that you may live to fight another day. But enough of all the serious talk. I uh, hope you guys found this helpful. If there's something you feel like I left out in my EDC, leave it in the comments down below. There's gonna be a part two to this, things that I carry off body in other situations. Make sure you like and subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.